Have you ever looked up at the night sky and seen the vast universe in which we're in existing and felt really, really small? This is a great perspective to put on our everyday life. But I'd like to give you a different perspective, one where we can look down at the ocean, see millions of microscopic life forms and particles, and feel really big. There's loads of small stuff floating around in the ocean. This is controlling our climate, it's creating a sustainable ecosystem, and it's producing about 50% of the oxygen that you are breathing right now. So what might we find in a typical glass full of seawater? Well, if we zoom right in, we'll see a lot of water molecules. Uh, we'll see a lot of dissolved chemicals, trace elements, dissolved gases. Some of these are good and some of these are bad. But if we zoom out of the water itself, we'll see millions and millions of bacteria. They're working really hard to keep these chemicals in balance and make that water livable. It might be livable, for example, for phytoplankton. They're the next biggest thing we might see. These are microscopic algae that float around. They might just be five millionths of a meter across. They use the sun's energy to photosynthesize and grow. Sometimes they might be in such high abundance that despite being so small, they can actually change the color of the ocean so much that we can measure them from space. If we zoom out a little bit further, these phytoplankton are eaten by small bugs. This is one of them. This is about one millimeter tall. It's actually one of the most abundant bugs that we might find in the ocean. We call them zooplankton, and this is a type of zooplankton called a copepod. We can zoom out a bit further, and if we're really, really lucky, in our glass of seawater, we might see a small fish larvae. If we want to see anything bigger than that, we probably need a bigger glass. But you get the idea. This is how things survive in the ocean. Big things eat many small things. But these aren't the only things in the ocean. There's plenty of other random stuff. <clears throat> there could be sediments coming from rivers. Could be gas bubbles. Could be salmon lice. It could be pollution, like microplastic or oil droplets. It's my job to try to find ways to measure all of these different types of particles by designing instruments we can take into the ocean uh, and map and understand how these move. Here is another thing. This is about three millimeters tall, uh, and it's a particle. We call it marine snow, and that basically means that we don't really know what it is. But it's basically a bunch of everything else I've already talked about. There's bacteria who created mucus, uh, phytoplankton that also excrete weird things, and then they make this kind of sticky blob, which might also contain sediment grains and dead things. These things are actually really important for our climate because contained in this is a whole bunch of carbon, which this particle can draw down from the surface of the ocean and sink to the seabed where it's stored for thousands of years. So how do we make these kind of measurements of all of these different kind of things? Well, it starts with some clever colleagues coming up with some very random ideas and we have to find a way to pitch this to somebody who has some funding. And if we're really lucky, then we might be able to start to screw some of these ideas together into some new technology. Uh, and that might start in our lab. It might look very messy. We need to find a way to make it waterproof and withstand the huge pressure that you get from water when you're several hundred meters down. Then we might package the equipment up and send it to some faraway place where these measurements are needed. Perhaps we need to transport our equipment out on sea ice with snow scooters, or maybe we are on a research ship in total darkness for several weeks. When we get there, we'll deploy our equipment on a frame like, like this one here. We'll lower it off the side of a boat, uh, dangling maybe several hundred meters down 
from the side of the ship. I'm going to play you that video one more time, but this time from the perspective of one of the instruments that's on that frame, a kind of in situ microscope. So now the screen here is about three centimeters tall. And this would be what we see if we zoom into the ocean. A couple of seconds ago, I showed you a copepod. Did anyone see the copepod there? It, it was here. <laughs> it looks a little different because it's in a different orientation, but that's life. So we need computer algorithms to find these kind of needles in haystacks. And what we can do with that is essentially build a panorama vertically up through the ocean, which might be several hundred meters tall. But we've done that on microscopic resolution. And then we can map where all of these particles are and where they go. Someone like me might be living in a cabin on a boat, sharing with a couple of other people in a small space, smaller than this stage, actually. <laughs> We might step outside onto a deck of ice and snow. This boat will be moving, by the way. This was the last photo I took on this cruise. Uh, it was an expedition organized by a university in Tromsø. Uh, and this was the last photo I took before the sunlight went away. We didn't see the sun again until the end of the trip. <laughs> Typically on this kind of expedition, uh, there's a lot of other scientists all wanting to do their thing. And everything needs carefully scheduling. So we can go to the places we want to go to and fit in everything we want to do. Some people might need to work in the dark because they're studying organisms that are sensitive to particular types of light. So suddenly, all of the lights on the ship go off. And with no sunlight, everything is really dark. Or we might be out on sea ice, suddenly find a software problem, and end up debugging software in a storm on the middle of the ice. Typically, what happens then is someone who is in charge of media and outreach points a camera at you and then asks you to explain what's going on. And uh, as a scientist like me, that can be a bit stressful. It's a bit like what I'm trying to do now. Uh, but we just have to smile and explain it. And then one day, it will end up uh, on the internet. <laughs> Aside from these kind of technicalities, sometimes we get a chance to look up and appreciate the environment that we're working in. We get the chance to visit places and cultures that we would never actually choose to go and visit. And we get the chance to take technology that we've thought of here in Trondheim to some totally remote place of the planet and, destroy, and deploy it to several <laughs> hundred meters below the ocean. <laughs> you might think that was a slip of the tongue. <laughs> At the same time, uh, we get to work with some great people, really enthusiastic students and colleagues. But this is really inefficient. It takes a lot of resources, it's expensive, and the amount of measurements we actually get for the effort and resources that we put in is nowhere near what we need to really understand the ecosystem and the environment we're trying to measure. What's needed is measurements on mass over large scales and long time periods. And that's why we are working more and more now with experts on autonomous platforms, which can be deployed under the ocean, so that we can integrate our new technology for measuring these particles and send them out on robots to do the job for us. Now, NTNU and Synthef are developing a new laboratory here in Trondheim. It will be a laboratory inside Trondheimsfjord for exactly this. There'll be new robots being developed, new sensors on state-of-the-art data boys. Maybe in 10 years' time, there won't be a need for somebody like me to be out on an expedition in the north of the Arctic Ocean. Instead, we will sit at our computer and drive some robots out of the fjord here and just send them to where we want to go. That makes me wonder, how much can we really learn about this kind of environment just through the lens of a computer screen? Perhaps most of you listening to this talk now 
have experienced this kind of environment just through your TV or your phone or your computer. And that's why I'm really happy that today I can share with you my first-hand experience of being in these environments. So that maybe the next time you glance at the ocean, you can remember these tiny things I've talked to you about today. Maybe you'll feel really big, and maybe it will renew your appreciation or responsibility for our natural planet, which is precariously balanced on a bunch of microscopic particles and plankton. Thank you.